Good morning everybody out there in YouTube land and I hope you're having a splendiferous day. Now today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be erring on the side of history and uh, I really love history. It's something that's close to my heart and I think you guys probably know that by now. And as I've said time and time again, I think that the paranormal and history sort of go hand in glove. Um, so what we're going with well, the place we're going to today is we're going to the house of Oliver Cromwell out by Ben Stanton Huntingdon or yeah I think that's where it is it's out in Cambridgeshire anyway and uh, Oliver Cromwell um, was very known I think he was the Lord Protector of England and I think it was a title that he bestowed upon himself and um, Oliver Cromwell uh, was the leader of the Roundheads uh, because in England between in the 1640s, 1650s, there were um, some polit political uh, manications and there were also, um, there was also a civil war, civil battles and civil wars fought. And Oliver Cromwell being a parliamentarian, um, he was the one who put the hit out, if you like, for a, as, a, as a modern day description. He was the one who put the price on King Charles the first head and he was the one who got the king executed he was the king assassin or the king killer and um, what it was is that they felt that the king wasn't puritanical enough that uh, he was marrying a or he married a Catholic and they didn't want to be ruled by the Pope they didn't want anything to do with the Catholic state and um, they didn't want anything to do with being ruled by the monarchy, uh, purely and simply because the king had set himself up above God, and that is something that they didn't believe. They believed that it was uh, everybody was equal under the eyes of God, even the king. However, they pursued Charles I. There was a series of bloody battles and wars um, fought on English soil. Many English men died, uh, brother against brother, uh, son against father, and so on. And so what happened was they, uh, the Cavaliers who were on the king's side, they were kind of ousted. The parliamentarians took, took the place of, uh, or took their places, and um, it ended up in a parliamentar parliamentarian win. And they did get King Charles I, and indeed they did execute him. He, uh, his son, um, King Charles II, uh, he buggered off to France, um, but a few years later he came Buried, back to I believe he was then dug up and his head was cut off his body and it was stuck on a, a pole. I can't remember where that was. I don't know if it was Traitor's Gate. I'm not sure if it was. Um, but yes, but what we're going to do is we're going to go to his house today and we're going to look at um, a little bit of history of the English Civil War, which was probably the bloodiest time in England's history, certainly internally and also uh, look at the history of Oliver Cromwell, who was indeed a gentleman farmer and a Puritan. So, uh, yeah, a religious seller, I guess, is what you'd call him. But anyway, we're going to go to his house, and we find it very interesting, I hope, and we're going to see what we can see. Speak to you when we get there, guys. Right, so we're now in the uh, town of Ely, which is Cromwell's town. This is where he, uh, he came from. And what we have there, right in front of us, is Ely Cathedral. And behind us, I'll show you in a second, is Cromwell's house. We're just going to make our way there now and we're going to go inside and we'll have a look at the exhibit. So guys, here I am outside the house of Oliver Cromwell, England's Lord Protector. And um, basically, um, a little anecdote about uh, Oliver is that um, a few guys have ever heard, he was getting a painting done of himself and uh, the artist that was doing the painting at the time said that he would uh, doctor it, I guess, to uh, make it look better than it was. And Oliver Cromwell said, no, you will paint me warts and all. And that is where we get the saying today, warts and all. Just a little, little snippet there, guys. To Cromwell's house. This is it right in front of us.
Mouse House. Hazel's laughing at some uh, bits. I'm laughing at the stuffed mouse. The stuffed mouse, apparently. So She's finding it highly funny. <laughs> that's quite cute, actually. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, so I was, oh they're on the size of chickens, they're quails. They're quails <laughs> so we're going through to the 13th century kitchen. Oliver Cromwell 
died in the Palace of Whitehall on the 3rd of September, 1658, following an illness which had worsened with grief over the recent death of his favorite daughter, Betty. In life, he had refused the crown and title of king, but in death, his people buried him as a monarch in the chapel of the kings in Westminster Abbey. He had achieved much as Lord Protector, had encouraged religious toleration, and had made his country one of the greatest in Europe. However, in 1660, Charles II was restored to the throne. Those who had signed his father's death warrant were in their turn to be executed. Three of those who had already died were also not to escape punishment, and their bodies were exhumed. So it was that Oliver Cromwell's body was removed from Westminster Abbey. After being hanged at Tyburn, the head was cut off, placed on top of a pike, and displayed above Westminster Hall. But on the night of a great storm, the head fell down. A soldier picked it up. Later, it passed into many hands. Three centuries later, in 1960, a head, said to be that of Oliver Cromwell, was buried in the ante-chapel of his old Cambridge College, Sydney, Sussex, where it remains to this day. Cromwell's life ended far away from this house in Ely. But some say they have experienced a ghostly presence in this very bedroom. Could it be that the Lord Protector returns to keep a restless watch over his much-loved home? Another interesting fact about Cromwell, we're outside this wonderful building that was once his home. Another interesting fact about him is that uh, when he started, this, or when the Civil War started, what happened was that uh, it was the same for the um, it was the same for the gentry as well. It was the same for the kingsmen, the cavaliers. They would uh, pay um, not mercenaries, but they would pay men to join their army, and uh, that's how they they did it. But by 1645, he realised that. Uh, Paid men wasn't quite what he wanted. He wanted somebody professional. So I think it was Lord Fairfax that he employed because Lord Fairfax um, was a commander at the time and Oliver Cromwell became his second... He, he put Oliver Cromwell as second in command because Oliver Cromwell um, statistically was a very, very good um, military uh, leader and uh, fantastic at it. And so he uh, employed him, or employed him, he made Oliver Cromwell, even though Oliver Cromwell employed him, he made Oliver Cromwell the second in command. And uh, what they decided to do is they decided to build a professional army from 1645 forward, and it was that that won them the Civil War, basically. And they were called the New Model Army, and that is what today's British Army are, well, that is the British Army today, are descendants in the direct lineage of that that army, the New Model Army. It's all based around the New Model Army's ideals and ideas. Cheers, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you uh, make the most of it. And, um, yeah, just a, it's probably a short one, but, uh, yeah, I hope you got, got something from it. Look after each other, guys. Look out for each other. Be there for one another. And be kind to one another. All important things. Take it easy now, guys. Bye.